Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Steam sale. Well, actually, there's a lot of sales going on, and we're going to blast through all of them. It is Monday, the 22nd of December. We're going to start out with Steam. We're going to move on to Humble Bundle and Green Man Gaming, and maybe one or two others, depending on the time. And I will say, and I'm going to get this right off the bat, that the Steam sale today is not that impressive. Um, it's one of those sales where we've seen a lot of the titles previously, but there's a couple of reasonable games, so let's get on with it, shall we? So, The Walking Dead Season 2 is going to kick us off. It's six twenty-four. that's dollars. If you're paying in pounds, we get a pretty good deal, actually. Us Brits, we get it for four seventy-four. Um, I will say, before we discuss The Walking Dead Season 2 and whether you should pick it up, hint, you should, don't play Season 2 if you've not played Season 1. Two reasons. One, you're not going to know the storyline, and two... Your decisions and your actions from the first carry on to the second, right? So, if you do play Season 2 without playing Season 1, what will basically happen is that you'll get some basically choices, and kind of some default choices, but it's not really the ideal way to play the game. Anyway, so Season 2 and Season 1 are, of course, based on the comic slash TV show of the same name, and... I will point out that the game is not happy fun time, so in other words, it very much follows the vein of the comics and the TV show in that respect. It's not exactly point and click, but uh, it does have some kind of elements. You move around, however, with Waz. The, the overall set is a bit odd. It's a bit like The Wolf Among Us in that respect. Um, I would suggest that you do check it out, as I don't really have anything bad to say about it, to be totally honest. Next game, and I don't think this one really requires an introduction, but anyway, Train Simulator 2015. It's not a bad price, I suppose, $8.24, that's dollars, or if you're paying in pounds, $5.24. So us Brits get an actual really good deal on this one. Um, I don't really have much to say about it. If you're interested in trains, if you're a train fanatic, then I suppose it's for you. For me, I don't really care. Then again, I'm not really into any of those simulation things like farming simulator. I'm pretty sure at one point there's going to be a toilet cleaning simulator. But, you know, if it's your thing, then go ahead. Anyway, next one is Endless Legends. I'm not doing this list in any particular order, as you've probably ascertained by now. It's 17.49. That would be dollars. 13.49 for pounds. Not bad. So this one is a, what is the best way to describe it? It's a basically a turn-based fantasy strategy. Um, it's by the same guys who did In the Space and so on and so forth. So you're basically controlling a civilization, building it, and doing all of the normal gubbins that you'd expect from this type of game. It scores fairly well. I've personally not tried it. You might want to give it a shot. Um, it's... Not a bad price. It might go a bit cheaper. The only problem with games that are kind of in this price range, obviously depending on your own budget, but if you're working on a very tight budget and you know, you're know you kind of going into a game that you don't really know, it's always that little bit of a risk of, oh, I blew a lot of my budget on this game. Unfortunately, there is no demo. Overall, opinions are fairly positive. I've not played it. I've heard it's pretty good. <clears throat> what I'd suggest is at least look at the videos of it or something to see if it's your thing. Basically, if you like StarCraft slash Command & Conquer, fast-paced RTSs is probably not going to be your type of thing. And also, if you like something like, I'm just trying to throw an example, Theme Park, you might not like it. But if you like a more tactical type of game, then you may enjoy it. Uh, let's just figure out which one to pick on next, shall we? Dynasty Warriors Complete Edition. This is actually Dynasty Warriors 8, to be exact. So it's going to cost you a fairly princely sum. It's going to cost you like seven bucks. And you can also pay... Um, hang on. Let's have, oh, no, I'm sorry. It's going to cost you $17. I misread. I didn't read the one there. And it's going to cost you $13.59. So it's not a bad price. It's 66% off, which isn't bad. Um, I don't really think it requires much for me to say about the Dynasty Warriors series. I think everyone kind of knows what it is. The basic idea, of course, is that you are pretty much a one-man army taking on a rather large army. So basically, of course, you're running around with special attacks and so on. It scores fairly well. I actually quite like the Dynasty Warriors series. I know that it's not anything terribly original, but I think it's quite fun. 
one benefit is it does support local co-op. And local co-op is not it's not super rare in PC games, but it's nice to have. So yeah, anyway, um next one, GTA 4. You thought I was going to say 5 though, didn't you? Well, no, you didn't really. But anyway, GTA 4 is available. So there's actually a couple of options with this one. Um, you can get GTA 4. You can get the one with San Andreas as well. You can get the complete pack. You can get the complete edition. All these diff come with different things. For example, they might come with uh, the DLCs. Or they might come with episodes of Liberty City and San Andreas. And so on and so forth and so forth and so forth. I don't think it really requires me to tell you much about GTA right now. Um, 75% off, $5.00. Or it's going to be about, well, £5. So as Brits get pretty hosed or you Americans get a really good deal. Depends on your perspective, I suppose. It's all about perspectives. I will point out that the game GTA 4 um, actually got some really bad criticism on launch. So if you Google around and you, like, you know, to kind of look about performance. Back when the title was released, there were some major issues with the... Um, Basically the fact that the game really hammered CPUs at the time. It was really CPU and GPU, but primarily CPU intensive. This was actually, as a little bit of an aside, when uh, E6, E6600 and Q6600 were really kind of prevalent. And a lot of gamers were buying E6600s or equivalents, E8400s I believe were one of them, and overclocking the balls out of them. Unfortunately, the game was heavily threaded um and this was of course because consoles back then you know console development was really moving forward and so a lot of gamers were actually really disappointed with this one um and it was pretty obvious i mean i i had a couple of arguments with people on forums who were recommending e8400s and e6600s to people rather than the q6600s and or equivalent as they were coming down in price and I was like you know what it's just not a good idea to do this because if you see the you know you, you could just kind of read the signs that the PS3 and uh, 360 and so forth are becoming a lot more multi-thread and this one really hammered a lot of people's systems so you shouldn't really judge it from that the game does play fairly well there's a lot of mods available even if you're not a massive GTA fan it could well be worth picking this up purely for the mods because they're pretty they're pretty cool, I will say. Um, speaking of pretty cool, I must say, Outlast. So this one's going to cost you five US dollars, or it's going to cost you three seventy-four. Now, the basic premise of this, of course, is that survival horror. You are in an insane asylum, and in that insane asylum, people don't like you very much, and you must escape from that insane asylum. I've covered this on the PS4. I believe it's still a free game on the PlayStation Four. I'm not one hundred percent. What I'd suggest. If you happen to own a PlayStation 4, and you're not someone who rages over playing on the controller, I personally hate playing FPS on controller, I really suck at it, um, just because I've been playing PC games for so long. But if you are someone who's happy to play on a controller, and this is still free, I honestly haven't checked, then I would suggest just playing the PS4 version, or the Xbox One version. Actually, no, the Xbox One version I believe you have to pay for. So I'd suggest you buy... Uh, sorry, just pick up the PS4 version if you're a PSN subscriber. Because at the end of the day, it's free. But if you either want the slightly better graphics, and yes, despite the fact that the engine isn't really too demanding, the PS the PC version does look better than the PlayStation 4. Despite the fact that it's kind of a it's an okay looking game, you know, it's not the best. But obviously, you do have high resolution textures and stuff on the PC version. Uh, despite the fact it's not a particularly demanding game anyway. But you could also go ahead and enable dynamic sampling um, or SSAA or whatever. And of course you could turn on, say, MSAA. You could improve texture filtering and do the other bits and pieces to make the game look a little bit nicer. Plus, of course, you've got keyboard mouse control. In regards to whether it's a good game, yes. I have to point out that I'm not normally someone who gets nervous in games. I actually played through Amnesia. And as soon as I realized that the enemies just don't really you know, mean anything if they kill you. I didn't really feel, feel myself terrified. So yeah, I, I, I'd, re I'd recommend this one. Saints Row the 4th, um, 5 US dollars, or if you're paying in Great British Pounds, we get to pay 424, so it's not a great saving. Yeah, it's okay. I have covered this on the channel. I really like the first Saints Row. 
and Saints Row 2 was okay. I found myself getting less interested in the series as it went on. I, I don't really like this hyper-realism. The basic premise here is that you are in a video game, which kind of explains why you've got all of these random powers. I personally couldn't get into the storyline, but that's probably not why everyone plays the game. So, you could give it a shot, I suppose. Uh, Chivalry Medieval Warfare 379, that would be great British pounds. Or, if you're paying in US dollars, it's going to cost you like five bucks. Um, this one, what's the best way of describing this one? It's basically a first-person um, combat game, if you will. Um, I had to say... Not one of the games that I'm interested in. I don't know too much about it. I've heard it's fairly good, especially if you're willing to play multiplayer. Do a bit of research is basically what I'm saying. Um, not really that uh, that uh, that well known on it. I'm going to quickly go through the new deals, which are like the daily, or say yeah, the new 12-hour deals. You've got a couple. You might have missed them depending on when you watch this, but blast through them anyway. So these are the ones I know about. Uh, Red Alert 3. Pretty good game, actually. Well worth it. I, I'm really a big fan of the Command & Conquer universe in terms of the storyline. So, could well be worth checking out. A lot of gameplay there for the price. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade's Bloodline. Masquerade's Bloodline... Here's the problem with it. Unpatched, and by unpatched, I mean the official patches that are released for the game. It's pretty balked. There have been some unofficial patches, and quite honestly, it can be a bit of buggering about. If you're interested in this type of game, get it. If you're not, or it's not really your thing, or it's just something you're just looking to play a good game, maybe give it a miss. Because quite honestly speaking, the developers themselves haven't fixed the game. There's a hell of a lot of issues. It's not terribly difficult to install patches and stuff, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit old as well. So I believe it's based on the Source Engine. Um, also, Papers, Please. Uh, I don't know too much about this. I've just heard it's pretty good. It's two forty nine. That would be US dollars. They've also got um, 3D Mark currently going quite cheap. Could well be worth picking up if you so desire. I mean, personally, not really something I would buy for myself. Um, but obviously, we own it for the sake of benchmarking. But, you know, if you're just kind of doing it for yourself, it's probably not that worth it. Humble Bundle. We're going to blast through these because there's so many games it's going to take me too long to go through them all. I'm just going to go through the deals that I feel are pretty nice. This War of Mine is available a little bit off. It's only a tiny bit, but then it's been out for some time. It hasn't been out for that long. It's only 12.74, so it's only basically this, uh, this is a pound price. It's only saving about two pounds. Not bad. You've got Shadow of Mordor, 24 pounds. Not bad game. I've been through the reasons that I don't like what the developers did in other words a very shady review practice as you can google about that in your own time Witcher 2 Assassin of Kings not a bad price 374 have seen it better um, Wolf Among Us is available for five bucks if you so desire Valkyra Chronicles pretty solid game only a couple of pounds off however uh, Alawank franchise which is basically four pounds well worth it Final Fantasy 8 not a bad port I suppose not great but not bad You've got Don't Starve, Reign of Giants, 549 complete. Pretty good price, actually. Shadow Warrior, really good FPS. Very old school, 299. Sonic Collection, which gives you all of the old Sonic game, or basically every Sonic game ever. Not bad. Anti Chamber, very good puzzle game. You can get motion sickness, so I'd suggest at least looking at a video. We've got one on our channel, or Google around. Divinity Original Sin, very good uh, RPG. Uh, Alien Isolation, an actually scary horror game. I know that's a bit of an odd thing to say. Gauntlet, 749, definitely worth picking up. The Walking Dead Season 2, I've just spoken about that. Uh, Red, uh, Road Redemption, not don't know much about that. The Banner Saga is definitely worth picking up. Uh, 374. Thief, not bad actually, for £5. I'd, I'd buy it. You've also got The Walking Dead Season 1 for 524 So, yeah, that's not a bad option. Five Nights at Freddy's, so this is the first one, the second one's available on Steam, this one's going to cost you basically a pound, so if you're looking for a title, oh, and Legend of Grimrock 2, very good game right there, Final Fantasy 7 as well, five pounds, not a bad price, um, it's basically going to be the same version as released on PS4, Murdered Cells Suspect, I've heard mixed things, it's five pounds, eh, 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 it's okay, Tomb Raider, 
Not a bad price, 624, because it's the Game of the Year edition, which features loads of DLC. To be honest, the DLC kind of sucks on this game anyway. 624, not bad. South Park Stick of Truth, it's still pretty expensive at £20. I've heard good things about it, but I've not personally played it. Final Fantasy, free. Good game, 549, not too bad. Batman Arkham Origins, as I've said a billion times now, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I personally felt that Origins is the worst out of all of them, but it's still pretty solid for 374. Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition, yeah, the Definitive Edition is an upgrade from the regular edition, not bad. Uh, FTL Advanced uh, Faster Than Light, this is an advanced edition, well worth picking up, really cool game, 149. Uh, Prison Architect, not really my thing personally, but I've heard good things about it. Could be worth it if that's something you're interested in. Don't Starve 349, this is another game that is available on PSN for free, but it is a very solid title. Um, I'm just making sure there's nothing else. Oh, Far Cry 3, very good price at £5. You've also got The Legend of Grimrock, the original one, for 149 So, yeah. Uh, not too shabby. Finally, I'm going to go through Green Man Gaming because time is ticking on. Time's marching on, my friends. And I've already been speaking for too far too long. Uh, Murder Soul Suspect and most of those other games are available on Green Man Gaming. Castle of Illusions are a really good price at $2.49. You've got the Dark Side Franchise Pack for $7.49, which is an incredible price because you get all of the games and a ridiculous amount of DLC for all of them as well. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not great, not bad. Uh, what other games? Oh, uh, under the 48 hour section, they've got 25% off DMC. Mm, oh, sorry, uh, Dead Rising 3. DMC. Dead Rising 3 is $29.99. Not the best price, quite honestly speaking. It's a pretty good PC port. Check it out if you so desire. I've made a video on it and an article explaining how to fix some of the numerous PC issues. DMC Devil May Cry, not bad. 74, seven, sorry, I'm sorry, £7.49. As far as I'm aware, this does not include all the DLC. I think I've seen it cheaper than that, but it's not bad. Serious Sam titles, may I humbly recommend to at least pick up Serious Sam 3. Really cool game, 5 Um And you've also got Duke Nuka Megaton Edition, which is one seventy four. Very good price indeed. And that's about it, I think. Yeah, I believe that's about it. Um, I have covered all of the other Green Man Gaming in another video. I think it was yesterday or the day before. So there's no point in me rehashing all of that. So anyway, hopefully you found it helpful. I'll see you soon. Take care, my friends. Bye for now.